On today's episode of The Happy House, fresh and fun party ideas for little farmers. And then, interested in running? Why not get the whole family involved? We'll talk to an expert to learn how to get started. Finally, interested in owning your own business? We'll talk to a successful business owner and learn how she got started. Stay tuned for The Happy House. Peggy and I worked together to plan a really sweet and fun farm party. And I think this party is probably great for kids, what would you say, ages like two to four, two to five? Yeah, right in there, boy or girl. That's what I like about this theme. We looked for a theme that could be for a boy or a girl, because a lot of times at that age, you do have boys and girls coming to parties. Mm -hmm. And kids tend to love animals, so we created this farm theme party. One thing that's different about it is we planned it to be in the morning. So fun. Typically, parties are in the afternoon, which again, for kids of that age, might not always be the best time. Nap time. Nap time, so we decided let's have a breakfast party because kids in general also like breakfast food. I think a good time to start this party might be like nine o'clock in the morning Mm -hmm. after everyone gets up. But let's start with one of my favorite parts of every party is the invitation because one, I love getting invitations to parties. So many people do email. I know, and two, it's just fun to see how cute they can be. So Peggy actually came up with these and I think that they are so clever and also, were they easy? So easy. Okay. I actually had cardboard, you know, that comes like stuffed in things with like the back like of your the, paper. It comes in packaging. Yep. And then some neat um, kind of photo paper or Just invitation paper. Store. And then you printed this off right on, on the, computer. the computer. These are some 3D stickers. Mm-hmm. But what's really cute about this invitation is what's on here. Oink, cluck, moo, Lincoln's turning two. So start your tractor and stop on by because we're having a party for our little guy. Yeah. So. That is a really great thing too. And then, as I mentioned, it's a breakfast theme, so and it's a farm theme, so we sort of went with this farmhouse table theme. One of my favorite things is these berry crates that we found, and they were so inexpensive. On clearance at the craft store, I just put a little fabric tape right around there. Made it so cute. You could put berries in there, fruit, and activity can, stuff. For our menu, we chose, rather than a birthday cake, to actually do cinnamon rolls. So it's a sweet alternative, and you could certainly make a giant cinnamon roll for the that birthday child fun. and then put the candles in there. Awesome. So, And then we went again with some little fruit kebabs. It's been my experience that kids like anything on a toothpick. And then, of course, pigs on a blanket. Pigs on a blanket instead of in a blanket. We <laughs> thought that was cute. We've used these little milk glasses mm-hmm. and straws, paper straws, to hold either milk or orange juice. And then talk about this, because we've got these oh, cute little these stickers. these are fun. We thought the kids would have fun picking out little stickers and putting it on their little cup so they would know. So that's easy, so the kids can know which glass know is which there. Know which glass is theirs. And then in the center of the table, we've got these treat bags, which if you don't want to use the crates, uh, we made these treat bags that have an animal sticker, and then again, just some ribbons. So, ribbon. so easy. And same on the gift tags, if you wanted to put those on something or for a place setting mm-hmm. or on a gift for the birthday child. And I like to put the name of each child on the bag before they get there. So in this case, kids are actually going to be collecting the contents of their treat bag throughout the party. So they'll be able to just have a spot to leave their things. And let's talk about the silverware because this is one of the cutest things that I've ever seen. Peggy came up with this. So easy. Just found at the store, you know, where they have sections of all different colored uh, utensils. This is the green utensils and an orange napkin. Lay it in there and roll it up. And then it's a little little carrot. Yeah, a little carrot. So really fun. On our plates, we have bandanas, which the kids could actually use as napkins or could be tied on them as soon as they got to the party so they could be a farmer. And then we've put different things like this little tomato pin cushion with a name in it to be a place setting or these a deck of cards on each place. And that can, again, go into their favor bags. So perfect. Let's move on to exactly what we're doing at this party. We've got some fun games. Go. Mm-hmm. After our delicious breakfast, it's time for some fun and games. So we've come up with some farm themed games. And one of my favorite things is this ring toss that Peggy made out of mini Coke bottles. And just, how did you do this? 
Just white tempera paint, took a few coats, but it was super easy, and then black spots right on there. And then you used what for the rings? Shower curtain rings for a dollar. It's like the best deal. The so picture. I know. So that's a really fun little thing and goes along with our farm theme. I also like something I remember doing as a child myself is the clothespin drop where you would get on a chair or a stool and you put this jar on the floor and kids try to drop clothespins in. The thing to remember is your audience. So you want to make sure the opening to your jar is big enough so that they're actually successful. Otherwise, it could be really <laughs> disappointing. And you, we've just used a big mason jar here and tied a ribbon on it. So it looks nice easy. and cute, easy. And then, of course, it wouldn't be a farm party without pin the tail on the pig. So just bought a piece of foam core and drew a pig on here, which was really easy to do, a couple of circles, and uh, and it doesn't need to be perfect. That's the important thing, I oh. think, to remember when you're hosting a kid's party. It's the idea of things and just making it fun for everybody. You could have your kids color it with a pink crayon and super easy. And so then you blindfold kiddos, or not, and have them um, go up to the pig and try to pin the tail on the pig. And those are just simply uh, pink pipe cleaners, right. or, or chenille stems right. as they're now called. Curl them around your finger or pencil. Yep, and use those. Or you could also use the curly ribbon that you have home. Another game I love, it's one of my favorites, is called Musical Hoops. And it's similar to musical chairs, but each child gets a hoop that you lay on the ground in a circle, or you can actually just scatter them around, and you play music, in this case, country western music, of course. And you would put these on the ground, and then when the music pauses, each child runs and finds a hoop to stand inside. What I like to do during the music also is call out different activities like gallop, skip, oh, hop. And then they get in, in the hoops. Only each time when they're moving, a, a grown-up removes one of the hoops. Okay. And then you get to the end. And no one is out, though. They're all trying to stand in the same hoop. That's great. So it's a really cute game. It's a challenge to get them all together. And they all kind of bunch in there. And finally. We've got this cute little horse stable here with all of these different horses. It's really fun to hide the horses around the yard and actually have the kids go on a hunt either separately or together. But I, I do like to keep the kids together since it's probably, since it's a younger party, probably only like six kids maybe. And they can move around together and hunt for the horses and then put them back into their stable. Adorable. So. These activities in the breakfast should keep kiddos busy for an hour to an hour and a half, which is just perfect for that age group. And then mom can take a nap. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> it's all done by 1030. Awesome. Right? Mm -hmm. To see all the details on the party we've planned here and to learn more fun party ideas, visit our website. We all know running can be a great form of exercise, but how to get started, how much to do, and actually then how to bring your whole family into the fold are really good questions. So I'm here with Virginia Brokyakman from Twin Cities in Motion, and we're gonna talk all about running because you guys really are the experts. So first of all, how does somebody get started? Well, if you've never run before, I suggest that you start walking. Okay. You do a little walk, a little run, so like maybe a minute walk, a minute run, and do that, repeat that as many times as you can. Kind of like interval training in a way, mm -hmm. okay? And then let's say I'm really ambitious and have a goal and say I wanna, I've never run before, but I wanna run a 5K or a 10K. Are there resources out there to help me kind of plan for that? You can go online, you can go to our website, the Medtronic TC Kids Marathon Program, okay. and you can find that at the Twin Cities of Motion website, or okay. you can go out online um, and find uh, programs that will help you. And we have one that takes you from beginning to working your way up to the 5K. What are the benefits of running? Oh goodness, besides the fact that it's really fun, yes. um, it's actually good for your heart and good for your lungs because you okay. can increase capacity. It's actually really good for your brain too because the increased blood flow helps your brain, stimulates okay. your brain. And it also just makes you feel good. Uh, you know, that feeling of that euphoric feeling when you're done lasts with you all day. That's great. So as with any sport, um, there's injuries that can happen. What are the what, what should we watch out for and how do we prevent and keep ourselves safe from injury if, we're, if we do take on running? 
Rule of thumb is just always start off easy and don't do more than you can because that's really how you get hurt. You either push too fast or too far. Okay. So have a plan to gradually build up over time. Okay. And if you do have, um, you do get hurt, it's always good to go in and get checked to make okay. sure it's just, uh, it's, it's minor. Okay. So I have got two kiddos with me here, Chandler and Ella. They're both going into second grade, so they're around eight. Is that too early or what's the best age to start kids on a running program? You're never too young, but again, okay. it, the same rule of thumb applies for them. Start slow, start easy, build up, maybe walk run if they already know how to run, then maybe just do it for shorter distances and work your way up over time. And I know the mile is a big thing at school. That's a big part of the physical um, fitness program. So each spring I think the kids have to run a mile. Yes. What? How, how long does it take kids typically to run a mile? You know, it, well, everybody's it varies, speed is different, yes. but you know, an average 10 or 12 minutes is, okay. you know, for, for an average an average person. Okay. I'm, you know, like personally, I'm yeah, I'm not too fast either. You know, I can do a nine minute mile. Okay, um, all right. But you know, so it just depends on, on um, you know, how far along you are in your training. But you know, you know what, it's just moving. And it's even if moving. they have to walk run in that mile, they're moving. With Twin Cities Emotions, you guys are in motion. You have this whole equivalency chart that is um, sort of like this many cartwheels is equals this much running or this much hula hooping. Ella was saying you can hula hoop for 10 minutes, right? So that is another thing to think about too. If you don't want to run all the time, there are other things you can do that still condition you to run. Is that correct? Yes. And what you can do is, so if you know that you run a mile, say in 10 minutes, okay. and if you do the equivalent heart rate in hula hooping, in soccer, in dance, and you know, if you're moving for that 10 minutes, you can convert that to a mile. Okay. And that's, you can do that right on the website. I think that's great because a lot of times, especially with kids, they don't want to do the same activity yeah. all the time. Like our name, we want people in motion. Right. And it can be running with us or it can be out doing other things. We just think it's really important to support people moving. So how long would you recommend these guys warming up before they were going to go for a run? Oh, I think just a few minutes. You know, yes. they can do a little gentle stretching and maybe do some running in place, some jumping jacks. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just gently start off. And, okay. and if, you know, and if that feels good, you can increase a little bit. And if it needs to stay at that pace, just stay right where you are. What are the proper warm-up techniques for kids? Can you show us a couple things with these guys? Sure. All First, right. we'll start with our feet together and gently go down and try and touch your toes. And if you can't touch, it's okay. Just hang. And you would do that for 10. Or you would spread your feet wide. Spread your feet wide. And maybe okay. touch this foot, for your left foot first, or your right foot, either one. And hold that for 10. And then you go to the other side. Hold that for 10. Or if you want to get your heart rate going, you start doing jumping jacks and that do you want to do jumping jacks and we can do our jumping jack okay. or you can just run in place you know you just want to kind of get things moving and maybe you want to put your arms behind your back and stretch or do that yep you got it you just want to move around do you recommend a little bit of moving before the stretching no either it's at the same time it's either fine. way yeah okay so you have kind of an outreach program to get kids moving can you tell me a little bit about that sure it's called uh, the Medtronic TC Kids Marathon program and it's it's geared towards parents and teachers to help them uh, get the kids moving okay and it's again it's a half mile mile 5k training program okay. and you can go online download it it's free and then um, you can actually log your miles and so you can use it then to build goals once you get started with running I mean it can be hard to get started but once you get started and you've got a race under your belt it's sort of like addictive you kind of want to do your next race so I mean it can be a lot of fun and then just the whole camaraderie with it and all of the things that go with it yep. but yeah and I think that's what's neat for families too is none of you have I mean nobody has to be great at it right? right you just get out you move and over time you build goals as a family and I think that also builds you know more together time which is as important as moving I think it's great too yeah together and moving I mean that's a really healthy way to spend family time mm -hmm. What about um, for those of us who live in colder climates or do get a lot of snow and those kinds of things, what kinds of activities do you recommend or how do you recommend keeping up with our running then during those times? Well, you know, if you actually have surfaces that are plowed, for example, uh, you know, here in the Twin Cities on these lakes, they're plowed, right? So you can actually get down and run on them. Um, it's just important to be dressed properly. Okay. You know, you know that we need to cover our head and our hands when yes. it's cold. And then you just layer up depending on the temperature. Okay. And you know, it's a trial and error thing too. Like you yeah. go out and run and if it's not enough, you add more the next time. And if it's too much, take it off. But biggest thing in the winter is finding a good surface. And okay. if you can do that, you can still run outside or you know, run in the, the kids can run in their gyms at school. Okay. They can sled, they yes. can skate. You know, we're lucky to have skating. Yes. You know, there's other activities All too. Those activities. Mm -hmm. I love your program and I, I love your races. You guys do such a great job with everything. So thanks for talking thanks. to us about running with kids. Thanks for having me. To learn more about getting started with your running program, visit our website.
A lot of us think and dream about starting our own business, but kind of, but getting there is actually the hard part. I'm here with Alexis Walsko today, who is the founder and CEO of Lola Red Public Relations. Mm -hmm. And you started your business from the ground up. At, at the age of 22. Yeah, which is mm -hmm. very amazing. Oftentimes we start these businesses in our own homes. I think that that's how you got started. Exactly. I was living in Boulder, Colorado in a 450 square foot condo. I had the tools such as the internet, an 800 number, an email address, okay. a printer everything that needed. gave me everything that I needed to develop a service-based business, which is what public relations is. Well, and I think that that's really interesting too because oftentimes when we think about starting a business, a lot of us are sort of uh, doers or and we can we can make something but often maybe don't think outside the box about starting something where you don't have to make a thing as women we're all consumers mm -hmm. so we are consumers we want and I think some of us many of us have the dream of seeing what we make in stores the hard part though is that that's a, not that's a challenge to scale. How many things could you make? How many, what happens if everybody wants one? Right. You can't Which be is sitting, dream, it's, it's, then... it's an absolute dream, but making it in your home or making it in your basement mm -hmm. becomes a challenge pretty quickly. And so I think a lot of times people discount services and the fact that everybody need services, whether right. it's housekeeping, whether it's accounting or bookkeeping or lawn care. I think that's true. So like, let's actually, public rela relations is fascinating to me. Let's talk a little bit about what exactly that entails, because I don't yep. think a lot of people really do have a firm grasp on that. There's two things. There's advertising, yeah. and then there's public relations. Advertising, those are the full page glossy things that you see in newspapers, in magazines. Public relations is the editorial that's on the other pages right. that is not paid for. So we spend our time going and pitching the people that write all of that editorial content mm -hmm. on ideas, on products, on services that we believe they'll find attractive, but also that our clients pay us to get these editors um, engaged and make them super knowledgeable on the product or the service. I think that's really interesting because anybody knows that you can pay for an advertisement, but to actually have a writer write about your thing or recommend your thing gives it more credibility oftentimes than paying for that ad. Absolutely. And it's so, it's people sometimes um, estimate what a value of a public relations mention is mm -hmm. against ad value, but that's really, that's not a good practice right. because public relations is so different and it's sort of, it's word of mouth marketing. Mm -hmm. And so, and a lot of times, and especially now in sort of the new age of media, uh, people are following the editors, they're following the reporters, they want, they feel like they know them and especially that they're in their media. family with social media. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so the recommendation, actually it has, it's just, it's multiplied. It goes much further. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's really interesting. So your business, we talked about um, actually making physical goods versus offering yeah. a service, but eventually you get to a point where you can't be the one doing all that. So when do you decide to take on an employee? I think you, first off, I think you need to make a decision on where you want to go with this, right. with your business. What is your goal? Is it just to take care of your family month to month? Or is it something, is this a bigger dream? Is this something that you want to build and to sell? I studied entrepreneurship and so my first lesson was that you need to have an exit plan. Okay. Um, so I think you start with that. I think then looking at um, how can you multiply the money that you are making mm -hmm. or the product or service that you are providing. If you, if you need to, um, if, if you have the ability to multiply it, that's when you have to start hiring employees. Okay. And in hiring employees, you also need to determine what are you absolutely best at. Mm -hmm. So in my business, it took me, after probably four years, I hired my first employee. And what I knew when I hired that person was that I am horrible at the day to day. <laughs> I am horrible. Okay. So okay. writing the press releases, following up on all of the pitches, I can do it, mm -hmm. but it takes me probably three times longer than it takes another person. Okay. So I hired someone that reduced that time. And yet I also know I'm really good. I really like people. Mm -hmm. I really like sort of the sales aspect of my business. Right. So if I spend my time doing that and then have people that can do what I can do in one third the time, then all of a sudden that's a profitable opportunity. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So what one or two tips would you give somebody who's thinking about starting their own business? Um, do it. 
<laughs> that's the, I mean, that's I the it. number <laughs> one is that I think that you just have to jump in. So right. there, have no fear, but also realize what you do really well and take the time that if it is a business that you want to grow, set the foundation. So I'm not sure how many tips I gave you right. there, but <laughs> if you set the foundation, then you will be able to scale and your business will survive. And ultimately, I believe that a lot of people that start businesses, they want things that outlive them. Right. So, and that they can put their legacy into, whether it's a jewelry line or if it is a lawn care business. Right, right. Thank you so much. This has been really helpful. To learn more about starting your own business, visit our website. Mom, what time is it? It's science time. Science time! It's my favorite part of the day! All right. Well, today's trick is called the balancing act. So, we have this book. Chandler, can you hold this book for me? Is that it's heavy? Is it heavy? Not too heavy. Okay. Ella, can you hold this piece of paper for me? Is it heavy or light? Light. Really light. Light. I feel it. Do you guys think I can balance this book on this piece of paper? It's easy. Yeah. Well, that's not balanced. It's the, the counter is supporting the book. Do you think I can balance this book on this piece of paper? <laughs> no. No? Yes. If you roll it up, no. If I roll it up, no? No. Hmm. I am Maybe. going to show you. So, like, if I folded this paper in a tent and put the book on top, it's going to just, Whoa. like, <laughs> right? It's gonna, yeah, let's All just right. try that. All right. Prepare to be amazed. You ready? Uh -oh. So, I'm going to roll this piece of paper up. And I'm going to take some rubber bands. Wait, this is going to work. I know it. Do you? I, lo I love science. You know I like science. science well. always works. Science always you works? Know, Mom, well. you know I like science. And this is going to work. Okay. We're going to be able to balance this book on that. Okay. Maybe. So I'm glad. I love your optimism. I love that about you. Okay. <laughs> so we've got this cylinder right here. And you do have to be careful. It's a balancing act. But I am going to be able to put this book on this piece of paper. Ta-da! Oh my. And the reason this works is, sil why, Ella, do you know? Because it's a cylinder shape, and cylinders can make like a book or anything balance. It's one of the strongest shapes in the world. If this cylinder were solid, it would be even stronger. That's our science lesson for today.